Welcome back to another episode of Retro Muscle. Today's episode is covering the 1974 Mr. International. But before we begin, I just need to point out this little bit of information that I think is real important. Originally, the competition was supposed to be held in Tijuana, Mexico, and promoted by former Mr. Universe, Eddie Sylvester. He actually had promoted this show before for 10 years, but there turned out to be a few issues behind the scenes. Well, according to Muscle Builder's Sound Off article, a fan from Mexico asked why the show was taken away and brought to the U.S. The Weeders claimed that Eddie Sylvester was in violation of multiple codes in the IFPB bylaws, including unpaid fees and promoting unsanctioned competitions. But they left it at that. However, I think it goes a little deeper, because throughout my research of this competition, nobody's name came up more than Sergio Oliva. Okay, let's go back to August 12, 1973, when the Mr. International was held in Tijuana, Mexico. Many great bodybuilders competed this night, but Sergio was the clear winner of not just his category, but the overall event. But Sergio refused to accept his trophies and actually turned to the crowd and challenged one of the audience members. And that was none other than Arnold Schwarzenegger. That night, Arnold was actually sitting with Joe Weider and Franco Colombo. Sergio was very popular amongst the crowd and really had them going. He kept encouraging them to cheer, to try and convince Arnold. But of course, Arnie wisely declined. And and I don't blame him. He was still four weeks out from the upcoming Olympia, along with Franco. So while Sergio continued to excite the crowd, Franco, like the good friend that he was, stood up and walked to the stage to take on the challenge. Although out of shape, Franco stripped down and posed for a little, followed by Sergio performing a small routine of his own. Um, And with no real winner, uh, promoter Eddie Sylvester came out smiling, raising both of their arms in the air, declaring it a draw. But here's where it gets interesting. Not too long after that, it is found out that Sergio Oliva had competed in the WBBG, and that's the World Bodybuilding Guild, uh, ran by Dan Lurie. Um, They had their competition called the Mr. Galaxy, and it was found out that he supposedly, days before the International, competed in that show and won it. And since this organization is not affiliated with the IFBB, this technically made Sergio's entry in the International invalid. So, he was disqualified. But when I was doing my research on the Mr. Galaxy in question, I found that Sergio had won this event in 1972, and the International took place in August of 73, So there's no way it could have been days before. So, I don't know. I smell a little conspiracy here. Or a cover-up, at least. I don't know. I even found this article written by Rick Wayne. Uh, It acknowledges some sort of beef between Oliva and the IFBB. And we all know Rick Wayne, you know, he told it like it is. If he saw something that was up that he didn't like, he'd say it. You know, this thing could probably be its own episode. But, you know, we're here to talk about the 74 International. Now, along with this event, the Mr. Western America was taking place as well. With Eddie Sylvester out of the picture, Joe Weider actually handed the competition over to two new promoters, and that was Arnold Schwarzenegger and Franco Colombo. I have to give them a lot of credit because from what I read, they really went out of their way to promote this show. They even went on the local news an hour before the night show started. But before the night show can begin, we had a closed-off prejudging. No fans, just judges and photographers. Actually, most of the information I found was written by Richard Tyler, who was one of the judges. Um, Speaking of judges, there were 11 overall, but here's a a few big names I found to list. Uh, We've got Joe Nista, Armin Tanny, Bill Pearl, and George Eiperman, who was also the MC for the competition. Okay, let's start with prejudging. It's August 17th. 1974, Los Angeles, California, at the Embassy Auditorium. First up is the Mr. Western America, starting with the short class. Ed Giuliani was the only competitor in the category. Uh, The judges actually wanted to move on to the next category without even looking at Ed's physique, but he went out of his way to request for the judges to watch his routine, and they did. And I can see why he wanted to. He looked very sharp that day. Medium class only had two competitors, and they were Roger Callard and Johnny Isaacs. Both men looked good, in my opinion, but according to Richard Tyler, Johnny Isaacs' body was much more muscular, and he had such paper-thin skin that he was very vascular-looking. And finally, the tall class had three competitors, listed at least, and they were Jerry Branium, uh, and yes, it's the Jerry Branium you're thinking of, uh, which unfortunately I have no photos of him uh, actually on stage 
But anyway, the other two competitors in the toll class were Don Howard and Bill Howard. Okay, that's it for the Mr. Western America. And uh, before I talk about any of the prejudging with the Mr. International, I, I just have one thing I have to note. It's that all the articles I read pointed this one thing out. And it's that most of the top guys looked great, but they were at least four to six weeks out of shape. And, you know, it makes perfect sense to me, at least, because only a month later it was scheduled for the America, the Mr. World, and the Mr. Olympia to be held in Madison Square Garden. But, you know, with my research, I found out that it didn't happen in September, but it actually happened in early October. But anyway, um, my guess is that this show was kind of like being treated as a warm-up. Unfortunately, none of these magazines listed the full lineup for the night. Like this gentleman here, his name is Terry O'Neill, and they list him as a competitor, but no height category or placing. So instead of spoiling everything, let's just move on to the night show. With standing room only left in the auditorium, the night show began with Arnold thanking the crowd and the Sugar Ray Robinson Foundation for donating the awards for the competitors. After that, he turned over the microphone to George Eiferman, who would introduce the first guest poser of the evening, and that was Frank Zane. At this point in his career, Frank had really made an impact and was a serious contender for the under 200 category in the Olympia. After he was finished, the Western Mr. America competitors came out to give their own posing routines, but the top three fighting for the overall ended up being Ed Giuliani, Roger Callard, and Bill Howard. Giuliani walked away with not only the overall title, but he also won most muscular and best poser. After the winners are brought off stage, the curtains are parted to reveal the second guest poser of the night, and that was massive Ken Waller, who was also peaking for an upcoming competition. After he was finished with his posing routine, Frank Zane was brought out to be the MC, and while that was happening, they were bringing out a barbell with tons of weights, and uh, Frank went on to tell the audience that Franco Colombo challenged Sergio Oliva to the world's strongest bodybuilder competition because of claims made on TV by Sergio saying that he was the strongest bodybuilder. Sergio never showed up to the event, and after everything I said in the beginning of this video, I'm not even sure they'd even let him in the building. Instead, Dave Dupree took on the challenge, and him and Franco put on a deadlifting clinic for the audience. They started out with 315 pounds and worked their way up to 605, but that's when Dave Dupree had to bow out. Franco went on to stun the audience with deadlifting 675 pounds for three reps and doing them rather slowly, according to the author of the article. After Franco left the stage, Zane went on to introduce the third guest poser of the evening, and that was the reigning Mr. Olympia, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold brought down the house as he posed to the 2001 Space Odyssey theme, which is, uh, of course, of course he did. And after Arnold, Franco showed off his own routine, followed by one of the world's best-built men, in my opinion, and, and I'm sure a lot of people agree, Serge Nebre. And if that wasn't enough, Arnold and Franco came back out together to put on a dual posing exhibition. Man, that's crazy. I mean, to me, like, I've never seen a show with so many guest posers, let alone these big names. But on to the grand finale, the Mr. International. In the short class, you had Pat Lepontrek, who placed third. Um, I couldn't find much on him except that he moved from Thailand to Los Angeles. In second place, you had Jose Rivera, uh, which is another competitor that I couldn't find a- any information on. And finally, Ed Corney coming in first of the short class and winner of Best Poser. He put on a great performance, but as you can tell, he was off and, and, and rather soft. All right, on to the medium class. We had Kent Kewen coming in third place followed by Bob Birdsong coming in second. And in first place of the medium category and winner of the Most Muscular Award, you had Bill Grant. And Bill seemed to be the only guy in overall great shape. Not only muscular, but he was sharp, in my opinion. And on to the tall category. There's uh, only two competitors, and boy, were they big ones. Uh, You had Mike Katz placing second. Uh, he, He looked huge, but he was no match for Lou Ferrigno. Now, obviously, neither man here was as vascular as they could be, but size is what won it, and Lou was just too big to beat. And he not only won his class, but he also won the overall title of Mr. International. And that would be Lou Ferrigno's fourth straight win since joining the IFBB. He had first won the Eastern Mr. America, then went on to win the Mr. America, and finally the Mr. Universe before this show. You know, doing all this research, um, I got to read a lot of cool stuff. And one thing I found was an awesome article written by Arnold Schwarzenegger himself. 
and it was in the January 1975 issue of